Hello community, welcome to the second part, how we solve grogging. Here we go. How can we now induce grogging here, the top performance phase of an LLM at early phases? In part one, I showed you in this video that we now understand what grogging is and what happens before grogging. So now we understand here, if we have this 100% performance of our training data, that this delay here, this additional effort that we have to do now for the validation training set performance going up to close to 100% in this simple model or division. So we understand here this, and now we are focusing why is this late onset happening? And it is not, we understand now that it is late and we understand the mechanism that suppress it, but why does it happen here? Why this is now taking place? And let me explain this. So we understand from the last video, from this video here, that the core new insight is that the floating point absorption error in the softmax function, our softmax collapse prevents here the grogging if the network is allowed to overfit to reach 100% training accuracy as indicated by the red line. And once this happened, the gradient now aligns here with a naive loss minimization direction that I showed you in my last video nearly scales up all logits. And this scaling keeps now reducing the cross entropy loss function, the numerical function here, but eventually triggers some floating point overflow in the exponential, causing now the softmax to absorb smaller terms, I showed you this in my last video, and yield zero gradients for the correct class. So learning is coming to an abrupt stop. Our LLM is not learning anymore. We're exactly in this dead phase between the green line and the red line. So now to the solution. Why does the green line suddenly pick up here on our developer uh, data set? Remember, this is here the original paper we had in my last video, and today also we are focusing on this beautiful paper here by Lucas from the Department of Computing, Imperial College, London. So. Remember, the mathematics, I just need a little tiny bit of mathematics, the soft collapse from last one, the cross entropy with our logits, and actually the gradient from the core class becomes zero as well. Yes, you see, of course. And the second part that you have to know was this naive loss minimization direction that is taking place. And I showed you here that the positively homogeneous network, if we have this function f that describes our network and is dependent on the parameter theta with a particular degree l, we have here a scaling of the parameter, and this goes in a way, causes the logic to grow here as, and this was the function we stopped last time here, that the function of our network is simply here, that we have here a scaling with a particular factor C, depending on the layers of the network of our function. So this logic growth that happening continues now to lower our cross entropy loss because simply of this formula, and therefore, this does induce our cross entropy loss towards zero, but without any learning. The only thing that is happening is we have a scaling of our weights. This brings nothing into learning, but causes a numerical instability in our system. And now to the solution. You know what? We integrated in the training procedure of our LLM another term. Do you remember the term of the weight decay? Some people use it, some people don't. I do use it. And originally, the weight decay was here a regularization technique that we used in the neural network training for controlling the overfitting. This is a paradox. No? Now, this has another effect. So, by preventing the parameters from growing too large and the memorization noise in the training data, if we have this weight decay part here, this pen penalty that we introduce here to the loss function, this is now absolutely essential to understand. Why? Look, there is now a real delicate balance of the cross entropy and the weight decay. Therefore, if we have now the total loss function, so we have our cross entropy loss function here, plus this penalty term, this weight decay penalty term, there is now dynamic in this equation that is amazing. The more learning step we have, the more training step we have, as we find out, this parameter, the second parameter in this equation, becomes now the dominant parameter. Why? Because as the logit are scaled up, as the logit grow exponential, this here, the CE loss, goes down, almost close to zero. But this also means that now the correction term 
become dominant, become bigger and bigger, and suddenly are the dominant player here in this equation. Isn't this beautiful? So this explains now why we see this late onset of the green training line. So if our parameter theta is large enough, the weight decay terms becomes comparable or even larger than the gain from continuing doing here the optimization problem to shrink here the cross entropy loss function of our training system. So this means the net gradient now points away from our old scaling direction that did not allow us to have an additional learning phase, the performance phase of our LLM. So the model is forced to search for another gradient direction, gradients or directions that are actually now improve the generalization, the learning capabilities of the LLM, without further growing the parameter magnitude just by scaling up by a constant factor. Isn't this beautiful? So these two effects now play together and this gives us now the complete understanding of grogging. We don't only understand why it's delayed for such a long term by the software collapse and this, this particular gradient direction that is happening, but now we understand why, even after such a long term of nothing, suddenly the training sets in. Great. Now, having understood that this is a two-factor problem, we can find a two-factor solution to this. We can now accelerate the onset of grokking much earlier, so we don't have to waste time, energy, and whatever. So just to remember, the classical softmax function here, softmax collapse, I showed you in my last video, making the loss in the gradients zero. Now this is the solution. Instead of the classical softmax function, we now replace here our exponential function in the softmax with another particular function that grows more slowly for large x terms and doesn't vanish for the negative x terms. So one choice you could make, there's a lot of different choices, the author of the paper just showed you here from Imperial College London went with this particular choice and they define this here not as a softmax but as a stable max function with this particular formula. So this performs now, or this forms now from our logic, the probability distribution, just like the softmax function did, but it has a tame growth here for larger logits. Isn't this beautiful? You see how simple our solution, if you understand the root cause why the system fails. What we achieve, what effect do we achieve? Simple, we don't have these positive runaways anymore. And we have a reduced overflow risks. Because now the summation is much smaller than the exponential summation from the classical softmax function. Isn't this beautiful? So now, remember there I told you two parts here. Now, the second part was the naive loss minimization direction of the gradient of our system. Now, told you alignment here in this particular direction is comparable to simply here a numerical scaling. And it still reduces here the cross entropy loss without changing here the prediction. This means the generalization learning performance. It is just that the numerical value of the loss goes down, but it, uh, if you want a mathematical malfunctioning, it is just achieved by scaling parameters, but not by, by learning new representations. So what we do Hey, it's theoretical physics time. Welcome. What is the simplest thing you would imagine? If we have a particular gradient here, you can say this is the sum of two parts. No? Think about geometry. You have one parallel part of this. This is parallel to our theta and one that is orthogonal. If you have a mathematical space where orthogonality is defined, but more about this later. We have one that is orthogonal, so therefore we have a term that is parallel to our tethers, and one term, we have here the orthogonal sign, that is simply orthogonal. So, isn't that beautiful? And what a coincidence, the parallel part here is the direction that simply scales the weight and causes all the problems here for our NLM gradient direction, causing here the runaway logic growth, the scaling, and you know what we're going to do? You know what is the solution? 
<laughs> we only use the orthogonal part and you might say eh, amazing and the orthogonal part is defined here by an unbelievable but a simple formula and therefore we have now an orthogonal gradation defined that we will use so therefore we can circumvent the problem that we only have here the parallel um, gradient uh, component that goes here to scaling the parameters let me make this clear. This orthogonal decomposition is just one way, the simplest way you can think about it. But you know what is the beauty? It's an abstract mechanism. So you can implement it here on top of different uh, optimization technologies. Maybe you'll go with an atom, atom W, whatever. Because it just projects here the gradient orthogonally to the weight vector. And thereby it prevents, isn't this beautiful? It prevents here our naive loss minimization effect. You might say, unbelievable. Such a simple solution. If we would have understood this problem seven months ago, two years ago, we would have been able to come up with the solution earlier. You see, one group of researchers decided, hey, we now want to find a solution we don't just go with the mainstream, with the trend. We sit down, we examine this in detail. Then we write a paper and we can explain to the world why this is happening. Amazing work. Great. So here we are at the end of the video. We have now the summary. Welcome. So what we have. First element, as I told you, it's called stable max instead of soft max here. It simply has the effect, it stops here our softmax collapse that we have here in the classical LLM, letting the LLM continue to learn here beyond the classical training accuracy on only the training data set. And then, second part is here the orthogonal grad optimizer. So once the model reaches here the perfect training accuracy, the logit scaling is now blocked. So the system is now in its optimization mathematical procedure that it is uh, executing. It must now find some, if you want, true generalization direction in the parameter space and not scale the logits. This is it. This is simple, beautiful, amazing. And together, these two methods attack here the numerical and the optimization roots of why grogging can fail. My last video showed you the root cause is the soft mass collapse and the logic inflation. And thereby we have our solution. Thereby we are now enabling here our LLM to continue learning meaningful features without this extreme long delayed phase before suddenly we have the onset of the performance phase of our LLM. Isn't this beautiful? So I highly recommend you read this paper here by this group here. They have a lot more of technical details, of implementation details, of further examines how the direction changes here on a manifold. A lot of more of mathematical proofs, idea, is it really possible? Can we do this? What are the drawbacks of this methodology? Really nice. I just given here you the, the main insight, the main idea how to do this. And as you can see, we have here the GitHub, we have here the code available. Go there, you can play with this. Remember, there is still this question, if we have deeper and deeper learning models, language models, now we have so much complexity in the interplay of the layers of our transform architecture. Is grokking here, the general phenomenon of grokking also happening there? Can we optimize here for an earlier performance phase of our LLMs? There are a lot of open questions how to do this here with the different complex LLMs that are open source if you don't have access to the weights you have no chance at all to do uh, optimization. But I think this gives us some beautiful insight to improve the performance of our large language model and of our small language model in particular. And as I speak, I have two small language models where I try to apply exactly this code here for a better a much better performance with a much earlier onset onset of this grogging phase for the LLMs. So really for me the first days to try this out to really get my hands on get some experience here with this new methodology but I think it's really a beautiful example if you are encountered here with a problem that nobody in the world understood 
And then you just have a look at it. You have your own ideas. You implement your ideas. You examine it. You do a research and you find a beautiful solution that is simple. You have a stable max instead of a soft max and you have an orthogonal gradient where you simply force your system to go to leave here the trivial solution, the naive solution and go for the real learning procedures in your LLM. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a little bit of fun. I was fascinated by this paper. Please go and read. You will discover so many more, so many new facts that I can't tell you here in this 20 minute video. But it would be great if you want to subscribe to this channel to see you in my next video.